Show me what you invest in, and I'll show you what you value. So the absence of memory. A society like ours cares little for memory, but makes a song and dance about culture and tradition. So there must be a disconnect somewhere. Culture, in any case, is a dynamic construct, but an evolving one as well. So precedent is important as a line in any narrative. And this misunderstood fact explains why we care little for our past, but yet we believe we are better custodians and respecters of tradition and culture than others. We are wasteful with culture because we fail to revise it in line with contemporary thinking. We spend a fortune on traditional weddings, many times traversing the country to attend such events. We list endless requirements for this purpose, but yet the actual marriage is often neglected. We still foolishly believe that little gestures cannot evolve, and they have. It was not that many decades ago that it was an abomination to hand over objects with one's left hand. Well, where are we on that now? Has anyone died from using the left hand for the purpose? We jettisoned our local faith and religious practices for imported styles. So much so that we talk of Mecca, Israel, and other places far away. Where has that gotten us? We squander hard-earned money on pilgrimage. No wonder we are so poor. Even Boko Haram is a perfect example of inferiority complex and where it can lead to fighting at home for imported religion. If we were so cultural and respectful of tradition, why the looting of the nation's commonwealth? Why do we keep voting for scallywags or producing the scallywags in the first place? Now, we see, when tradition meets modernity, then a minister of government gets slapped by a female managing director that he ought to be supervising. And the chauvinistic reply from that same minister is she has had four husbands. Again, where in a modern society would serving and past senators, representatives, and governors receive contracts from government? As a nation, we have no traditions today. We refer to them, but they are gone. We call them up when we think it will drive this African narrative. Whereas industries like tourism and culture cannot thrive because we don't care. So let's forget the charade that is decency. Nigeria is culturally bankrupt and needs to cleanse. And so instead of pursuing the complicated foreign agenda of gender definition and LB, LGBTQ and so on and such like, we need to get back to our roots, to a time when a name was more valuable than wealth. Liberos, do you want to jump in or should I? No, I can. I, um, okay. I think the advocacies today are like linked okay. in a way. Okay. Um, I see, you know, cause and effect. What we're seeing now is a result of bad governance. You know, this is what we're seeing. We're losing our value as a people, values as a people. We're losing our essence, the tradition, you know, because the driver has lost direction. We don't value that which makes us unique as Africans. Yeah, I remember the days, you know, used to be proud of your culture, you're Nigerian, but now everybody wants to be Western. Hey yo, you know what I'm saying? Hey yo, you know? We've lost all of those things. And it's sad because we don't have the right leadership. We don't have the right people to direct us. And for so many other re reasons, poverty and all of those things that are not working. So it's interesting and, how and, all the advocates are tied. And that's why um, we would celebrate um, Big Brother Africa mm -hmm. and then parade the nudity and um, the nonsense. Um, and yet, do not celebrate you know, those that made first class in engineering or those that made first class in, um, in applied arts or breakthrough in medicine. Even the young ones that are excelling, doing very well. Even young people that are excelling will rather showcase, you know, stupidity, or you will rather see, you know, equate a lady with her looks than her brains. And, you know, um, we, the, the list is endless, really. But for me, it still takes us back to education. And then also, I like what uh, my sister, uh, your partner, Aisha said, I was speaking in tongues, you want me to speak. <laughs> so said just now, well, she will understand when you. people ask me that question, um, oh, I wish the Ghanese of this world were alive uh, to lead us, I say, no, 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 no. We are the human rights advocates. I say, no, you are a human rights advocate. You are a civil society. You lead. What stop you from saying, you know what, walking to a law firm, I said, I want to partner with you. 
I'll pay some of the fees for filing. You use your brain. Let us challenge this law. Mm, and not okay. tell me, oh, if Ghani were alive, you would have been challenging it. You are alive. I'm alive. Mm. Let us okay. partner. Bring your money. I might not have, I might want to challenge it, but I don't have the money. Okay. But you have the money. Okay. You, you partner, you challenge. Don't sit down there and think things for will somebody change. Else to do it. Okay, uh, let, me, let me just quickly say, okay. I want to just say, uh, nice or did you want to, Aisha, let me quickly say this. And uh, I think to some extent, I understand where you're coming from, but I do feel that generalizing doesn't quite drive the point home. Because I would say a number of things you said there seem like generalization, to say we don't have any culture and all that. We do. Left. And to say mm. if someone chooses the culture, because you yourself admitted that culture itself is evolving. Mm -hmm. So if someone adopts something, there it's, it's, so what is culture really? That's what I was thinking about when you were talking. Culture is that thing we have in common that, that, that reflects a shared value system. So what has interrupted our evolution as a people around the culture that we maybe were born into is probably capitalism. We, we got, because capitalism is a reward system. I hope I'm not getting too far out there. So if somewhere along the line, we've adopted a reward system that tells us that, oh, as long as you get the money, it doesn't matter how you get it, then we set aside the things that act like a good name. So now he brought up Big Brother. It's good he did, because I was thinking about that as well. You, this is a reward system that we, our young people are looking at. Even my young, my 12-year-old daughter, has, her mates are watching. It's, they're telling them that if you want to be famous, if you want to be noticed overnight, you want to be a star, this is your ladder in a mm -hmm. country where there is no hope for you otherwise. Mm -hmm. And you see those people, they become stars overnight. So already mm -hmm. you're setting up a reward system where there isn't anything else that will tell them work hard and get this reward. So the reward system has broken down. And that is what is, we're generating by the things we do and the things we, the politicians we have as role models, that is a reward system that's constantly regenerating the wrong kind of people. Aisha, let me stop there. Mm. Uh, so talking about that reward system, let me take it up from there. We are a country where we punish uh, good behavior and reward bad behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, we, spoke, we just spoke about the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. This is the same That's lady who so under her mm -hmm. in the month of Ramadan, dates were given, there be no dates were given to be given to IDP <laughs> on the IDP. She was head of the refugee, I uh, can't remember what the full name is right now. Saudi Arabia brought in dates, and those dates that have been given to IDPs were actually sold in the market. Nigeria had to apologize for that corruption. And yet, what, what happened? Sorry. Instead of her to face panels, of her to be punished, her agency had done something, or she was rewarded with uh, a ministerial appointment. Let me come to the issue of culture. I think in the fact is that we are very inferior in the way uh, in the way we take on our culture. We don't see our culture as important. We see more of other people. And the culture where we are very good at using it is when it comes to oppression and hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take the issue of the LGBTQ uh, 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 topic right now. I am uh, I am 47 years old and I grew up in Kano. I was 10 years old when I when I started witnessing men getting married to men, and that was somehow in the early 80s. And even before then, they were doing it in Kano. Many people will be shocked about it. At that moment, the West were not tolerant of the LGBT, LGBTQ community, though there are other initiatives attached to it. Yes. They were cross dressers, they were homosexuals, they were girls. They did their own thing. Nobody bothered. It was you do your own thing. For us as kids, it was fun. You know, they were always so joyful and everything. They were mainly the ones, they called them endow endowed. The, uh, the, the women, to, the, the women who had their own, although the men were, were more accepted than the than the women who were who were lesbians. So what am I saying? But as soon as the West made it uh, made it uh, uh, legal for for men to get married over there and all of that, all of a sudden we found in Nigeria, pa, 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 no, you have to do it, you have to legalize it. Who cared before? Nobody did. They had their own life. They did what they wanted to do. They moved about freely uh, 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 across dressers and all of that. And for me, that is where that inferiority is all about. Today, for example, in Nigeria, polygamy is allowed, right? There are places where they do polyandry, some polygyny, whether women marry women, not in Nigeria, but in other African countries. But in the West, in the West, polygamy is not allowed. I think they call it bigamy or something like that. It's a crime over there. But just you know what? Wait until the West today legalize polygamy. You will not see mm. people that will not come and be telling you, Oh, we have to allow polygamy that a man can have more wives or a woman can have more, more husbands. It is high time we begin to focus and uh, yeah. respect our culture, respect the way we do our things, and just evolve on that way. The inferiority that we have, we should do away with. I could say more of that, but not on this side. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have proffered our solutions. Now it's time to hear your thoughts and ideas. 
And um, so on, we need more fainters, please. That's the NDTC probe. George Adeinka C says, I must tell you that the youth that are waiting to steal are more than the current people stealing. All we need is persecution. If these guys are not being persecuted, then these probes and investigations would continue to be worthless. George, do you not mean prosecution? Donald Outlaw has a series of things to say on four seasons of corruption. Are we raising citizens or slaves? He says, I like the idea, love or fear. I am glad you all are having discussion. Even so, apart from the societal issues tackled, what about starting small controllable social experiments based on proposed economic models or do some tests? Can't bring change merely from only discussion, but also plans and implementation. Just suggestions from a YouTuber. I think a good way to start is what are your problems? I think corruption override can start small and with a collection of small decisions. Later, it is, put, it is to put people of good reputation into key roles. For example, in the justice system, law enforcement, foreign policy, education, etc. I presume the reason that Africa as a whole fails was because there was no unity. And if there was, it was only from those in power and complacency, but resentment from its citizens. Well, Donnell Outlaw, I like the fact that you are reasoning with us. It has to begin with ideas and discussions, and I'm sure you'd agree. So please, everyone, continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, on Twitter and Instagram. That's at Plus TV Africa, hashtag again, the Advocate NG. To catch up with the previous broadcast, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Aisha is saying why continue to fear death when we are facing death every day. This is very heavy stuff. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.